Go ahead, brother. And I need two people to grab the speakers, too. Are we ready? Ready, let's go. Praise the true and living God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Today is your day of salvation. Your life is but a vapor. It's but a mist of smoke. I used to smoke a lot of weed and I would watch the smoke disappear before my very eyes within seconds. And that is how our lives is. Now let me tell you this. Your body is made from the dust of the ground and to the dust of the ground it will return. But your soul will go to an eternal space and that's gonna be either in paradise or it is gonna be in destruction. Yeah. Now I wanna let you know right now that in order for you to live in paradise for eternity, you must repent and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now there are two definitions that I can give you for repentance. The first one is gonna be in Hebrew. It means to turn away from your sin and to turn back to God. And the second definition I wanna give you is in Greek. And it means to change your mind about the way that you're living. Your mind has been corrupted. Your mind has been defiled. But it needs to come back to the truth of Jesus Christ. It needs to meditate on the law of God. So we see that repentance has an outward change and it also has an inward change. You need to bring forth fruit, which is going to be your behavior when you repent for your sins. Because you cannot go to heaven with a sinful mindset. You cannot go to heaven as you live in sin. In fact, God says that he won't even hear your prayers on earth. He is very far from the wicked, but he is close to the righteous and he hears the prayers of the righteous. And what makes you righteous is faith in Jesus Christ. Not faith in your bank account. Not faith in your president. Not faith in your football team. But faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. And faith is the substance of things that are hoped for. And it's the evidence of things that are not seen. Stop looking for a sign. Don't be a, a rebellious generation. Stop looking. And start looking to Jesus Christ. You're looking at things that are seen. Things that are going to pass away. Things that are going to upset you. You need to fix your minds and your eye gates on the word of God. If you want to see God, open the Bible. If you want to see God, start reading the scripture. And scripture cannot be broken. But scripture will break everything in your life that's resisting God. It will break depression. It will break anxiety. It will break food disorders. It will break generational curses from off of your bloodline. But you need to make the choice. Do you want to get in the word of God? Do you want to be transformed? Because if you're not transformed by the word of God, you will be transformed by Satan. And you will begin to steal, kill, and destroy. Make sure that the wire stays in, brother. Keep preaching, keep preaching. Make sure it stays in. You need to, or you turn, oh, you might be turning it off. <laughs> there, make sure, yeah. Praise God. If your mind is not being renewed by the word of God, by the Bible, then it's being renewed by Satan. And Satan's ultimate plan for you is to destroy not only your life, but the lives of your family, the lives of your friends, because he wants to take as many as he can to hell. He knows that his time is short, so therefore he is very wrathful. Therefore he is very mad. But Jesus Christ wants to give you life abundantly. Jesus Christ wants to bless your soul. Jesus Christ wants you to come back to him today. It doesn't matter what has happened in your life. He can change your life for the better and not for the worse. You're putting your trust into football games. You're putting your trust into things that honestly do not matter. Everything that your physical eyes see right now in this very moment is eventually going to pass away. But Jesus Christ, who you cannot see in spirit, is going to live for eternity. And he wants you to live with him. He has no pleasure in you dying. The reason that I'm bringing up death is because the wages of sin is death. The wages of smoking weed is death. The wages of idolatry is death. Over here. Yeah. The wages of drunkenness is death. The wages of fornication is death. If you are living in sin, you are living in death. You will go to your grave immediately. And that won't be the first death. You will die forever and be in torment. You will be weeping, gnashing your teeth. You will be begging for another preacher to preach to you, but there's no real preachers in hell. Jesus Christ wants you to repent of your sins because he loves you so much. And I understand that things happen in your life. I understand that things upset you. 
and people upset you, but God has an unfailing love. He has mercy stored up just for you. But if you reject it, then he will reject you. Many of you have heard the message that God will never turn his back on you. He actually will. He actually will give you over to a reprobate mind if you continue to reject him. And a reprobate mind that you would have is when you won't even know what you're doing. You'll be doing the wrong things and you'll be saying that they're good. And you will be encouraging other people to do those wrong things. But woe to those who call good evil. Woe to those who call evil good. Woe means judgment and warning from the true and living God. Charlotte, repent. Charlotte, turn to Jesus Christ. Charlotte, turn from your iniquity. Charlotte, turn from your sin. Charlotte, turn from everything that is opposing God and resisting God and get back with God. Get back in the Bible. Get back in the prayer closet. Some of you used to believe in the Lord so much that all you did was want to talk about him. But now all you want to do is talk about the hornets. All you want to do is talk about the panthers. Change your mind. Get back to your first love, Jesus Christ. And if you never had that first love, I want to encourage you today to find him. He's in the Gospels. Read the book of John. Get to know Jesus for who he really is. Now with some celebrity pastor tells you he is. And if you want to be blessed, if you want to walk in a life that's worthy to walk in, you need to obey God. Generational blessings will come upon your life if you obey the voice of God. But if you disobey the voice of God, there will be curses. Some of you think that you can preach some gospel that's contrary to the Bible, but in Galatians, Chapter 1, verses 8 through 9. Is that what's still on? It's curse. on, right? It's on? It says, A curse are those who preach a gospel that's contrary to the one that's written here. And the gospel is to repent and believe in Jesus Christ. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your strength. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. Jesus loves you. He wants a relationship with you. He is sending us out here after your heart because he loves you. But he hates your sin. Sin is separating you from God. Sin is destroying your life. Sin is going to tell you all of the good things that your itching ears want to hear. But eventually they will lead you to death and destruction and hell. But Jesus Christ is going to rebuke you. He's going to correct you. He's going to chastise you because he loves you. And he says to be zealous and repent. He wants you to walk on a narrow road. The road that we're walking on right now is very narrow. But there's going to be a broad path that everyone seems to be on. As we go to the Carolina Stadium, we see the Panthers fans are packed out. There's thousands. We already hear them. You can hear them. We already hear them. There's thousands of them. But Jesus Christ says broad is the way that leads to destruction. But narrow is the way that leads to life. And this life only comes through Jesus Christ. Amen. Every other religion is false. And I can prove it to you. What I'm saying right now are not only words, but it's power. It's power if you accept it. Power to change your soul. And this power is Jesus Christ. He's the foundation and source of this power. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Jesus Christ knows everything about you. He knows everything about your life. He knows how many hairs are on your head. He knew you prior to when you were in the womb. He knew you prior to when you were born. He knew you prior to when your parents even thought about having you. And he had a plan for you. And his plans were good. They were not for evil. They were to give you a hope and a good future. But most of you have neglected that hope and future for sin. For the wages of, the, for the wages of sin is death. And some of you love money so much. Some of you love the things of the world so much. But God says that a friend of the world is an enemy to him. You are making yourselves an enemy to God by idolizing the things of the world. The things that are going to pass away. The things that do not deserve your attention. If the love of the world is in you. If you love the world, then the love of the Father is not in you. God wants to give you a love that is faithful. A love that is patient. A love that is kind. 
He wants to give you a love that rejoices in the truth and not in evil. Genuine love. So many of you rejoice at murder. You rejoice at wicked music. You rejoice at disgusting entertainment. That's not love. The lesbians, the homosexuals, they would say, love is love. They're speaking of lust. And Jesus Christ said, if you look at a woman with lust, if you look at a man with lust, you have already committed adultery with her in your heart. And in the Ten Commandments, it says, thou shalt not commit adultery. Those who break the commandments of God willfully will not inherit the kingdom of God. You need Jesus. I need Jesus. I'm not better than any one of you. I've smoked the weed. I've had the parties. I've done all the things that the world says is success, but really it's destruction. Everyone is so blinded. Take the scales off of your eyes. They won't come off unless you hear the gospel. We care so much about you. You won't hear this anywhere else. But Jesus, he says, how can they hear if they don't have a preacher? How are they going to know that they're wrong when they have no one telling them that? No, go straight. Go straight. Repent. Jesus wants a relationship with you, a fruitful one. Not a relationship where you're in the world six days of the week. That's not what Jesus wants. Jesus wants everything. He wants you to forsake all that you have and to follow him. Don't get caught up in the world six days of that week. And then for the two hours on Sunday morning, you say, God, I'm going to give you all of me. That's not all of you. That's not even half of you. How are you going to demand a full-time God when you're working below part-time? If you want God, if you want his miracles, his signs, his wonders, give him all that you have. Pick up your own cross. Deny yourself. Die to yourself daily and follow the true and living God, Jesus Christ. Love everything else less than you love Jesus Christ. He will make himself known to you. He will change the way you behave. He will put a power inside of you that will cast demons out. He will put a power inside of you that will speak in new tongues. He will put a power inside of you that will raise dead bodies back to life. But are you willing to repent? Are you willing to accept the gospel of Jesus Christ?